Hello, and welcome to the University of Alberta's Opening Up Copyright Instructional Module on Including Third-Party Content in Your Work. Have you ever shared an image someone else created, maybe in a tweet or a Facebook post? Or maybe you've quoted someone in a blog post or in an assignment. It's natural to want to share things that we find interesting and compelling. Communicating with others is at the core of what makes us human, and sometimes the way someone else says something or captures it in an image is either better than we can do ourselves or enhances what we are trying to convey. Or let's say that Sandy here would like to share someone else's work to analyze, criticize, or provide commentary on it. Some of your uses of other people's work might be permitted under the Copyright Act or allowed under the terms of use associated with the work in question. In some cases, you might need to ask for permission to use a work. In other cases, your intended use of another person's work might be considered copyright infringement. This module will help you determine how and when to use works in which the copyright is held by others. Third-party content is the legal-sounding phrase often used to describe works in which you do not hold rights. In many cases, you will know when a work is owned by someone else, but not always. For example, Sandy's employer might hold the rights to work they created in the course of employment. Or they might have transferred the copyright in a work they created to someone else via a publishing agreement or other type of contract. Sometimes it's easy to figure out who owns the rights in a work, other times not so much. There are two questions you should ask yourself when considering the use of third-party content in your own work. Number one, is the person or company who holds the rights to this content okay with my using it in the way that I plan to? And number two, does the Copyright Act permit my use of this content? If the answer to the first question is yes, you can use the third-party content in your work, assuming that you also respect any terms of use defined by the rights holder. If the answer to both of these questions is no, however, you should ask the rights holder directly for permission to use the work or, if it's practical, find a different work to use. For the rest of this module, though, we'll focus on how to determine if the answer to either of these questions might be yes. Many rights holders will make it clear how their works can be used, but others won't. Some rights holders only want people to view their work online, not reuse it. Others want their works to be widely shared and reused. More and more rights holders want people to reuse their works and recognize the value of communicating this intention to users. One way they can do this is by assigning an open license to the work, such as a Creative Commons license. In many cases, it's okay to repost and share works with a Creative Commons license. Search engines such as Google and Bing and photo sharing sites such as Flickr have search tools that allow you to filter by license. These options might be under buttons like Tools and Filter. Don't forget to confirm those terms of use at the image's original source because they might have changed or been mistagged by the service that is aggregating the images. In addition to providing a web search index and a fairly decent mapping function, Google is also pretty good about informing its users about how they can and cannot reuse screen captures of search and map results. If you find content you want to reuse on a website you trust, take a look at the terms of use associated with the site, normally linked under headings like copyright or terms of use. Some companies make much of their revenue from the distribution and sales of other people's work. Publishers are the traditional example, and they can often also be the rights holder of the work you want to use. Some publishers, especially large academic publishers, make it relatively easy for graduate students and other researchers to reuse academic articles or the tables or graphs found within those articles for non-commercial purposes, often without requiring any payment. They do this by providing the user a license that allows them to reuse the work. Sometimes the terms of these licenses are reasonable, and sometimes they aren't. As always, it's up to you to read the fine print. Unlike the Creative Commons licenses mentioned earlier, these licenses are only between the publisher and one single specified user. To complicate things, many academic articles have both a Creative Commons license to cover some types of reuse, often non-commercial uses, and the ability to obtain a secondary license that allows for other types of reuse. To explore these options for an academic article, look for the Reprints and Permissions link, usually located near the top or the bottom of the article. In some cases, you might also be affiliated with an institution that has purchased access to materials made available online. This would include databases or journals like this one, accessible through your public or academic library. Again, learn about the terms of use for these materials before you copy, share, or modify them. Coming back to our two questions. If the rights holder is okay with your use of the work, you don't need to think about the second question and can go ahead with your use. If they're not, though, the second question you should ask yourself when using third-party content is, does the Copyright Act permit my use of this content? 
The Copyright Act includes exceptions to infringement, also known as user's rights. These provisions set out limited and specific ways that Sandy can use third-party content without the need to ask permission of the rights holder or pay royalties. Fair dealing is the most well-known and widely applicable of these exceptions, but there are also more narrowly defined exceptions specific to educational institutions, libraries, archives, and museums, and persons with perceptual disabilities. There is also a relatively new non-commercial user-generated content exception. Only a court of law can determine if a use or dealing is fair. However, you can complete a fair dealing assessment on your own to get a better sense of whether or not the way you intend to use a work might be considered fair and therefore non-infringing. Since court determinations of fair dealing are made on a case-by-case -case basis, there is always some risk involved when you rely on your own fair dealing assessment. If neither fair dealing nor the terms of use support your use of the work, you can ask the rights holder for permission for the use. In some cases, the rights holder may want Sandy to pay for this permission. This is more likely if Sandy expects to make money from their reuse of the work. In other cases, however, the rights holder might refuse the request to use the work at all. So it's pretty good to have a backup plan. Sandy's backup plan could mean changing the way they use the work with the intention of making the dealing more fair. For example, instead of making a course assignment that includes third-party content available on the open web, Sandy could limit the distribution to their professor or it could mean choosing another work to use in the first place. We mentioned the advanced Google search a bit earlier. It's only one of many ways to find images, music, and text-based works that are free for you to reuse. The Creative Commons search interface and exploring the free image databases listed on Wikimedia are other ways to find works that are openly available and reusable. To sum up, sometimes it will make sense to use other people's work as part of your own. Many rights holders make this easy for you to do by assigning an open license to their work. Others want or need to restrict reuse, sometimes to limit commercial exploitation of the work. The terms of use associated with the work, along with your willingness to rely on fair dealing or other possible exceptions to infringement, will determine how and when you use third-party content. Asking for permission from the rights holder to use a work is also an option. You should now be able to outline two key questions you should consider when determining how to incorporate third-party content into your work. Locate and identify the license terms or other terms of use for third-party content you're interested in using. And determine how and when you may use works for which the copyright is held by others. This has been the Opening Up Copyright module on including third-party content in your work. Thank you for your attention.